this is honestly why I feel like stock sounds are better than Omnisphere, are better than Contact sometimes because it forces you to get creative. It forces you to mix better. It forces you to change the sound and to really dig deep and experiment. Hey, what is going on, my guys? Like I said, we're still pushing. We're still pushing. We're still pushing 10K is almost there. Let's get straight into the video topic of today, which is, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but we're gonna make some fire beats with some stock sounds. That's pretty much it, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? I'm telling you, I'm gonna keep popping up in your notifications. And also, while you're at that, you might as well hit the notification bell so you won't miss any content whatsoever. With that being said, let's go straight into FL Studio and let's make some fire beats with some stock sounds. So, 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 what, what what are we doing here? What are we really doing here? I, I don't know. Uh, let's go into... Jesus, bro. I don't even, I don't even use any of these. You know what? Let's just go to Poison and let's see what we got in here. All right, we're not... That sounds like some Kid Cudi kind of stuff. I think this is going to be the hardest part, just sound selection. This is not it. This is not it at all. Let's go. Uh, I guess we can use that, right? Usually we go chord progression first, but I think I want to go melody first. that's not too terrible so what I what I'm planning to do is I'm gonna try to go for a simple melody I want to add some more notes on top of that and then we can start to add some chords and then we'll add a bass line and then we'll probably throw some a bunch of effects on it just to make it sound cooler all right all right all right I use that That's definitely not even in the same spot as before. Maybe if we move this down. Control, drag over, shift, click, control down. some of these notes put them an octave up um, this sound doesn't sound too bad but I want to go ahead and just see what else we can get out of this I mean I mean I guess we can use that as some sort of lead we can just throw like a reverb on this I guess it's gonna go in the uh, in the kind of little oozy direction, so let's just go with that. Why don't we pitch this down if we can use it as a bass? So now we can go ahead and change this and find a different sound. Let's see, where can we go? Where can we go? Oh, we can use that. Alright, so we have a lead. I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna change this. I think I'm gonna change this. Let's go to Citrus, see what's up over here. These are not it. These are not it, man. Let's go with the bird. Too sharp. Oh, <laughs> 
Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. I'm not gonna lie to you. Honestly, I think we're done with that. I think we're done with that. I'm just gonna go ahead and add some drums over this. And I wanna lower the volume with these claps. I think I wanna do this in like a one third kind of rhythm if that makes sense. So something like that, we can go ahead and just repeat. Something in between. Now let's just add this bass in here. Go back to the original melody. like that. There we go. Like I said, the kick and 808 relationship is probably usually the hardest to get down when it comes to the mix. So let's go. Now I know there's a shortcut to do this, but I forgot the shortcut. If you guys know the shortcut, um, let me know down in the comments below because that would definitely be helpful. Bring this down to a C5. And we can raise the volume on this. I know it's clipping a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and just change up the arrangement, and then I'm going to break it down to you and show you guys what I did and how I did it. All right, guys, so the beat is mixed and laid out, and I just want to talk about a couple of things that I did. All right, guys, so when it comes to the mixing, let's go ahead and see some of the effects that we have on. All right, guys, so for this bass right here, that sounds like this. First thing I did actually was pitch this down two octaves. Originally it sounded like this. So, so I said, you know what, let's turn that down an octave and see if we can turn it into a bass. I'm like, okay, that sounds pretty cool. When it came to the effects, there's a lot of effects on here because I wanted to make it sound like a synth bass. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off all the effects and let you hear what it sounded like before. Very, very, very low. So the first thing I added was overdrive <clears throat> just to beef up the volume. The next thing I added was this bass boost. Very, very lows and very highs of this. Then I added another parametric EQ in which I boosted crazy amount around 242 hertz around what like 8 db and then i cut out all the high end now it's starting to sound more like a bass sound goodizer just to beef up the volume again and then i added a fruity delay 2 with a widened preset just to make it a little wider The only thing I do have is a parametric EQ cutting out the lows and this second EQ is just taking out some frequencies that I felt like were a little too sharp and just making this melody just a little thinner. And, and that's pretty much it. When it came to the lead, which was the bird sound, I have a half time slowing it down by four times. I have it on half a loop of the sustain is at like 4.4 milliseconds and then I have the mix on the half time halfway. We have an EQ boosting some mid to high frequencies, cutting out all the lows. We have a little frequency dip right here because 
uh, some of these frequencies were a little too sharp. You have a second EQ, just cutting out more lows again. And then overdrive and fast distortion, all these things. Um, I was just experimenting with a couple of effects. Um, I did add a reverb down here. I have the wet all the way up. I have the bass all the way down. And I have the mixed knob to around like 30%. And then I have one more parametric EQ that's cutting out some more frequencies, cutting out more lows, cutting out more highs, and boosting around the 1800 mark. When it comes to the drums, I really don't have any effects on them because when you have clean drum sounds, you really don't have to worry about mixing them that much. But what I do have is some limiters and a peak controller on the kick um, and the 808 just to have that kick and 808 relationship a lot stronger. So I'm going to go ahead and solo these so you guys can hear what the kick and 808 sounds like and then I'm going to show you what I did. So the first thing I did was add a parametric EQ. The first thing I did was add a parametric EQ just to see where, where the bulk of the energy of this kick is coming from. And as you can see, it's coming around, I'd say like 56 hertz around there. I have a peak controller. And that's connected to the 808 through the parametric EQ. And all you gotta do is take one of the bands, make sure that it's make sure that it's all the way closed. And you do that by clicking shift and dragging the band to the left. And then I'm gonna target this frequency. I'm gonna put it right on 56 hertz. Right click, click link to controller. Make sure that the input is on inverted increment. Put it to 0 0.5. Change the peak control to just peak because that's the only thing that we want to target. And I'm taking the time down and also taking the smoothing down because I want the frequency to come back faster. So that gives us this. I felt like the kick really wasn't punching as much as I wanted it to. So I said, you know what? I'm sorry, Kenny Beats, but I'm also gonna have to side chain this at the same time. So I added a limiter. Let's move on to the arrangement. Uh, for the intro, I have no melody. I just have the bass, which kind of places both. I also added a love filter. So the intro sounds like this. And as you guys can see, the love filter kind of fades out. And then I have the main melody come in with the lead, with the bass. And then I also have the love filter come back again to kind of build up some energy. Then I drop it out right before the drums come in. That sounds like this. Honestly, this is one of my favorite parts of the beat is where I have this breakdown. I have a different version of the halftime. I have it pushed up to about 90%. And because I did that, it pushed the volume down. What I had to do was add another volume automation and push the volume back up just so that you can hear it at the right level. So here's what that sounds like. I feel like that little part right there adds an entirely new feel to this beat. This is honestly why I feel like stock sounds are better than Omnisphere, are better than Contact sometimes because it forces you to get creative. It forces you to mix better. It forces you to change the sound and to really dig deep and experiment because obviously if you have cool sounds, you're not really experimenting, you're not really doing much. You're using presets and then you're just gonna use them just like that because they sound good already. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys haven't already subbed, go ahead and click that red button down below. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any content, cool content just like this. And with that being said, I'm out of here, bang.